Well, as co-founder of the L.A. Dream Center, Matthew Barnett has been serving the homeless population in Los Angeles for more than 26 years. It's a community that has been hit hard by the coronavirus. Matthew is meeting the needs of those vulnerable people by following the nudge of the Holy Spirit, one small step at a time. Take a look. 26 years ago, Pastor Matthew Barnett's dream became a reality when he co-founded the Dream Center in Los Angeles with his father, Tommy Barnett. The center reaches more than 30,000 people weekly with its needs-based ministries and outreaches. But Matthew says this dream might have never become a reality if he had chosen to ignore God's nudge to help those around him. In his latest book, One Small Step, Matthew encourages you to bring life to a broken world by focusing on the needs of others, even when it doesn't always make sense. Well, please welcome back to the 700 Club, the author of, of One Small Step, Matthew Barnett. Matthew, your dream center is working in Los Angeles where over half of the California deaths of COVID-19 have occurred. Why do you think LA has been so hard hit? Well, I definitely think the homeless population has played a major role. We're about a mile away from it. And uh, we're just seeing so much need every single day. Right here at the Dream Center, we're feeding people seven days a week, 11 hours a day. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Every day for 11 hours, we're feeding 14,000 people that are driving by, the homeless that are walking up. To be honest with you, it almost looks like a, a horror movie where people are so broken and they've lost everything. They're coming through our line to get food, walking up to get food from the streets. I've never been in an era like this in my entire life in, 20, in 26 years of ministry. And to be honest with you, when, they, when we shut down a long time ago, California, and when they decided that they're going to shut down services, I thought this could be the end of the Dream Center in the flesh. And then I thought, you know what? we're going to go out fighting. If it is the end, we're going to go out fighting. And so I put my desk on the sidewalk. I said, we're going to feed as many people as we can on Monday, three days after the announcement was made. Well, to our surprise, God began to bless us. And we've been able now to go for 45 straight days of feeding people every day for 11 hours a day. You know, in your book, you talk about following the nudge of the Holy Spirit how did you get involved? You didn't have any money, and here this big property is available. How did you get the money? Well, what it started with just moving my desk on the sidewalk as a pastor. That's all the ministry I had was the desk. And then we had one little house. I started taking in people that had drug problems and, and ministering to them. And then one day I was driving down the Hollywood freeway. I see this big old landmark hospital, the icon of Los Angeles, called the Queen of Angels. And I went in and I just talked to the Catholic Church and I said, you know, we have a dream to have a church that would never sleep, that would be open 24 hours a day. Would you sell us the building? And they agreed to sell us the building for $3.9 million rather than $16 million that Hollywood was going to buy it for. And then I called my dad. I said, Dad, it's good to have a, a dad who can do things, right? And I said, Dad, I need you to help me come up with $3.9 million in 18 months. That's all I'm going to ask you. Not, not a big deal, right? <laughs> but he actually, he actually stepped up and we started to preach and go across the country. And I really feel like the reason why that this building is happening is because God has allowed me to be a pastor's son of three great generations. And as a part of that responsibility of being a pastor's son is to give, is to give resource to people in our community who have no voice. And that's the purpose of the influence I believe God has given me. Well, your f father, Tommy, is a dear friend. And what he's done, yeah. I mean, he just started with buses, and next thing you know, he got more buses and more buses, and he's got that huge church in Houston. It, as I say, it, you see it, it looks like something from out of space landed on the mountain. It's a huge <laughs> church. So, so you, you had a good background. I do have a very good background. It is, I think it's caused us it, during this time that we're in right now to really just you know, respond to the, the nudges of the Holy Spirit, those little things in your heart that don't make a lot of sense, but you know that it requires faith. And uh, we're seeing it happen. I mean, 425,000 people we've been able to feed during this time, um, 45 days again in a row. And I just can't even tell you that I think we were born for a moment like this, though, as a church. We were born to step out. Even our, our mayor and everyone's coming together saying, how in the world have you guys been able to be three days earlier than the public school system that started feeding meals? We were there three days before them that's making up the need of these children that don't have meals. And so... 
Well, growing up around Tommy Barnett, it's taught you to understand that man's need is God's call for the day and to step up and to respond and, uh, and to not to be willing to take a chance and take a risk on risky situations when it comes to helping people and making a difference. And we're seeing that happening. Right. In, in this book, One Small Step, you talk about a man who challenged you to run a marathon in seven different continents and you were injured and you kept doing it. How did you do it? Well, it was I was running for the people at the Dream Center. It was a, during a time where we were really struggling uh, the ministry because we added 200 more beds for the homeless people. And so we were, I had to literally empty my bank account to keep the ministry going for one more month because I think we expanded a little too fast. But a guy sent me a text message and he said, hey, why don't you run seven marathons and seven continents in seven days like these people are? And I said, that's crazy. I, I've never done anything like that in my life. And he said, I'll give the Dream Center $100,000 if you say yes to this. And suddenly I felt led by the Holy Spirit to go do it, right? And I, I trained for nine months. I know the Dream Center had tons of need. And we have started in Antarctica as continent number one. We went to Chile, Miami, Madrid, Morocco, Dubai, and Australia. I tore my patella tendon on marathon number four and found a way to lock my left leg and run like Frankenstein the whole rest of the way, all the way to my seventh marathon. I finished all seven in seven days on every continent of the world, even negative 30 degrees, 50 mile an hour headwinds in Antarctica. And uh, it's just all these things, man. The, the Dream Center should not be alive in this climate, in this neighborhood, in this community. For 26 years, it doesn't make sense. But when your heart is into something, when you're willing to give your entire life to something, anything is possible when God knows that you're not going to give up on the people that you love. Well, I think the Lord's hand is on that whole thing. This book, One Small yeah. Step, you've written quite a time. What's the main message you want your readers to get out of it? Just not to be afraid to step out on ideas that are that are maybe against what you think you're capable of doing and not being afraid to... Minister, uh, to minister to people in ways that might be outside the ordinary and, and, and not to negotiate with these impressions of the Holy Spirit that come into your life that tell you to do good, that's maybe even against your nature or the familiarity of your life, and to get outside your comfort zone and, and start, start to say yes to more things in life rather than justifying all the reasons why you can't do something. Well, you said yes to a lot of them. The Dream Center is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, renowned all over the world. And Matthew's book is called One Small Step. It's available wherever books are sold. Matthew, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. And it's a joy to be with you. If people want to be a part of the relief efforts, they can go to dreamcenter.org. And it would really help us go a long way to feed a lot of people. This could be going down until the fall in California. So we're up against a big challenge. Well, they're there. And isn't it wonderful? God bless you. What a great guy. What a great guy. What an incredible ministry. And I'm still trying to figure out how he did the seven marathons in seven he days. He has to lock his leg in place, and he's toward his patella uh, tendon. Only the Lord could have helped him oh, to man. do that.